these nine steps are to for me to explain to you how to go about on your side doing this activity now the the whole activity uh, when you when we practice for an ia we look to spend about 6 to 10 hours of work collecting data on it so the idea that i want you to do a number of trials is it's an expectation 6 10 hours is the amount of work time that you are supposed to put in for an ia for a practice ia um, this last one especially we if you guys spend 5 hours okay that's great so what you want to do is to get a piece of banana you don't even need a whole banana for a trial just a just a bit and you grind it up so this here is just showing you the grinding you get something to mix and to grind and if you have already a mechanical device that can do that then you could take an entire banana liquefy it completely right in your blender or your mixie or whatever you call it and you filter that here like so so you get a banana smoothie or you you get something very much liquefied and that thing that's liquefied is an extract it contains the enzyme catechol oxidase it contains the substrate catechol which when catechol which is the chemical the substrate catechol oxidase the enzyme when they're both exposed to air and the tissue has been squished which it certainly has been browning is going to follow naturally the rate of browning of course is going to be different depending upon the temperature okay people don't like their bananas to get brown of course the bananas get brown for a reason but people don't like the browning so refrigeration of course is a way to possibly reduce that rate of browning we are going to find out and get some data on to what extent does the refrigeration compared to the non refrigeration affect the enzymatic browning of of um, banana tissues musa sp so we prepare our two samples we get our camera take a photo of each one controlling variables of course i put here controlled what do you mean by controlled your camera has got to be in the same place for each one the same distance and then the the rgb reading from the color meter app which is something that i have on my right now i have it here on my mac mini desktop and i also have it on my mac laptop all devices um, will have something that they can use for red green blue photo analysis do some searching on your side please and see if you can access this quantitative tool that that researchers have been using it's not just me it's not just the people at U University of Southern California in in their chemistry course others have been using this tool for the last 5 6 years um very successfully to write some serious uh, research papers in biochemistry so see what you can get for doing your photo analysis then we don't want this to go inside the fridge for like 3 days or 2 days or one day even because think about it you guys are doing an enzyme catalyzed reaction right enzymes just speed up reactions they don't make the reaction happen so you are really trying to slow down one of the reactions by putting it in the cold temperature and leave the, the other one to happen as, as as normal if you leave it for long enough though they would both get to the end they would both get to completion they would both get as dark as possible so you don't want to leave it for too long because then the cold one is going to start catching up with the warm one so you just want to see that effect initially how fast is browning going to happen over let's say 45 minutes and if you are getting a big difference before 45 minutes then you could go less than 45 minutes okay but within 45 minutes you should get a lot of browning and and with this one on the outside compared to the fridge remember the more concentrated that you make your extract the more browning you are going to get because you'll have more substrate and you'll have more enzyme right adding water is just a dilution like we just mentioned in the lesson adding water is just diluting the whole system if you keep it concentrated every time then you would have um to uh, more enzyme more substrate more color change and and then better analysis 
Okay, so then pre your prior analysis and your post analysis of photo, then you would get a change. In and you don't have to do all three colors. A change in the red it might be the most likely one to go with. How does the red change for this one and for this one? And you do that ten times, getting the the color change for each of the trials, finding the average color change for the fridge and for the outside of the fridge, 10 trials, then each answer for the 10 trials could be compared to the other answer to see if there's a statistical difference in the rate of browning. That statistical difference is going to be by applying the t-test. The t-test the won't be valid though, unless, unless you um, have 10 trials. What is the t-test and how to do it? You'll have to look that up. I'm introducing you guys to another statistical test that's useful in biology in the right context. Last semester, I asked you guys to do standard deviation with error bars, and, and you did that, uh, or range with error bars, and you did that. That was the big learning that I said. And now the learning that I want you to pay attention to here is we're using the t-test. And then you make a conclusion. And of course, the rest of the whole story and the write-up and the experience of, of doing the whole thing, that's the minimum that I want you guys to do. The maximum that you could do is you could put in a third temperature. You have an air-conditioned area in your home and you want to put in a third temperature, then you could do that. So you'd have not, not just two, you'll have three. Then the t-test won't be valid anymore because the t-test is only made for comparing two sample sets with at least 10 trials. If you're going to compare the means of three, four, five, 25 sample sets, you need another test, a more sophisticated one called the analysis of variance, the ANOVA test. Doing the ANOVA test is something that the biology examiners know about very well. And if you do it, it would take you to a higher level of analysis even, more complicated, a third data point. If you have proper lab where you can control temperature, then you could come with five, five here, five different temperatures, of course, right? You could certainly do that. What about if you wanted your variable not to be temperature, but you wanted it to be pH? That also you can do, but that is optional for you guys. You can get five pHs if you want. All you need to do is to go on Amazon and search for pH buffer tab, or just search for buffer tablets. When you buy a, a buffer tablet, pH five, or pH 7 or whatever, and you dissolve it in a certain amount of water, you know you have created that pH. So you could put your banana extract in different pHs if you want. Um, you, we have the buffer tablets at CIS, but not everybody is going to come to CIS. We don't know when you guys are coming and all of that. So that's why I've gone ahead and designed this lab so that it is doable at home with simple materials at home, and one piece of software, which according to my check, I know it's available on, on every Mac desktop and every Mac laptop uh, by default. And there, from my reading online, I know that there are other versions of it for Windows systems. So it's just for you guys to research about this, please. Then research about the t-test. Then go start setting up and experimenting and seeing how your lab is going to work. 10 trials could be done in one go, though, if you plan right. If you're prepared to get 20 containers, 10 in the fridge, 10 outside the fridge, then you could be done in 45 minutes with all of your data. Uh, you could just do two containers and try to trick me and make me feel that you have 20. That's not the point of it. The nature of science is that scientific data is only valid when you do multiple trials. Science is not about reading, it's about doing, and it's about data collection and data analysis. That is really the practice of science, okay? So it's not about reading and cramming, really. That might be what you're doing for, for, your ex, for your board exam or whatever, but the practice of science, when somebody is a scientist, they don't go and ask their boss, when is the next MCQ test? They ask their boss, what sample I have to prepare, what I need to run, what report I need to write, and that's the practice of science and you have to be able to replicate things and keep it consistent. So 10 trials, if you only have two containers, it could be done. If you only have six containers, it could be done. Um, 
But if you want to spend the five, 10 rupees and go and get um, 20 containers, right, for 250, 300 rupees, it, it's just, just going to make your life easier. And I know you guys could afford it. I know some people are in places where things aren't that easy to get. And that, again, is why I have made uh, things doable. I hope that everyone can get a banana, a knife, and a few of these things that, that, that we need so that you could make the extract. And if perchance you can't get the photo analysis tool, I have it. All I need is your picture. You could screen share your picture. I could open, um, I can open the app right here and you can start seeing your data. But I'd have to spend some time with you. So hopefully you don't have to get me to spend the time with you. You could get a classmate who has it and they can, can do it for you like that online. Um, or you could familiarize yourself with it. If a student does this lab for the IA, it, it would score good. Wouldn't score top again, because remember, it's, it's just the ideal one is when you have a lot of data points on your, on your x-axis. That is kind of like the, the model of the perfect IA is when you have five variables on your x-axis and you do at least five trials for each of those. And then you have error bars and range and whatnot and, dis and discussion. But there's no one set model in science though. And this is a good lab, this one here, how we're doing it, especially it's creative in the sense that we are exploring this, this tool, okay? You could change it also by using apples. If you don't have bananas and you have apples, you could use apples. You could also use potato extract, but banana is the easiest one to make a nice, um, to squish it very easily and to liquefy it and to make basically a banana smoothie here, which is what goes into your refrigerator and what stays out. And to do it 10 times, I really want people to do it 10 times, you guys, because um, that's important. Accurate quantitative measurements, right? So we can't only be saying, look at, look at the color change. You see, it got darker, can't you see? That's not a strong way of collecting data in science. Qualitative measurements are not good quantitative, getting some value for how the color change happened is what we're looking for. Accurate, quantitative, qualitative, which is just saying it got darker and looking at it, that's not good. Qualitative is not as strong as quantitative, although both are useful, right? And then replicates to ensure reliability. A lot of these statistical tests that we use even, they're not even reliable unless you have five or 10 samples 